So um, I wanted to do a quick introduction this time. I usually just jump right in, but I want to talk about um, the biggest question I've been getting is where do I get the butterfly and dragonfly stickers? <laughs> and it's just kind of funny that you guys are all asking me that because it's so easy to find. Um, they're on Amazon. I am going to put the link in the description box on this video. I haven't in the past, um, but uh, you really just need to search clear stickers. That way the back of the sticker is clear, not white. Um, of course, the color will be in the uh, design, the butterfly, the dragonfly, or whatnot. And also you can search at an Etsy. Etsy has really fancy ones. Um, fairies and mushrooms and all kinds of things. Um, a lot of people use them for scrapbooking, so that might be a keyword. And it doesn't have to be dragonflies and butterflies. It can be hummingbirds and all kinds of things. So search Amazon, search Etsy, and um, I will put the link below also. Let's get down to the painting. So I'm going to do an experiment today and this is a backsplash that I got at Lowe's for $5. This whole section was $5 so you get all the little tiles or whatever. So I'm getting ready to do my backsplash in this over there and I got to looking at it and I had this idea I was just like what would happen if I cut it see see what I'm looking at here now that's about the size of a trivet right so but there's there's let me show you the back so I, I cut it out and when I first cut it out the netting completely covered it and I thought I um, wasn't sure how the tape and the, that would be all get in the way, but you still need it. So I peeled away as much as I could and left this part. So it's still holding it together. And now I'm going to put blue tape over this and um, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tape it up real good. And <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to move it. I might have to put a couple coats of tape because it's it's really not stable so like if I put I don't know just experimenting guys okay we'll see if I can get this to work out I got a piece of cardboard okay this is actually the cardboard that came in the thing all right so I just flipped it over I put four pieces of tape going this way four pieces of tape going that way really crust it in there and now it's holding together, not solid, but I'll worry about that later. And now I'm just going to take a razor blade and I'm going to carve this tape out. Um, not in between, obviously, but just on the outside. And then we're going to see how it goes from there. Well, that was a little finicky. It took me about 10 minutes. It wasn't too terrible. And... I just did exactly, you know, what it looked like. And the cardboard backing was important because I really had to, like, dig in to get, like, this This part was really hard to get that, like, exactly notched. But, um, finicky, but not hard. And you can see the tape is right there. So I think what I'm going to do when it's on the spinner is I'm going to cut this cardboard out. Um, that'll create support. Um, so here's the colors. All of these are color art. I'm not going in this order, but Firefly, Hydrangea, Sea Goddess, Mermaid Scales, Pixie Dust, and Papillion. And then these are my TLP colors, Golden Peach, Harvest Gold, and Lemon Sorbet. Okay, that's all the colors. Okay, so here we are. I am either going to, I think, what I'm going to try to do is make this into a trivet. So essentially I'm going to paint it. Okay. That's the back. I have a piece of cardboard cause it's still trying to fold. See that? So this is going to support it while it's drying. And the idea is, um, paint it, let it dry, resin it, 
quirk the back if I feel like that won't work, that it's too moving to be called a trivet, then um, I can mount it to a frame. As long as the artwork looks good enough. All right, let's give it a shot. This is super, super different, y'all. Super different. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit through like the empty spots um, and just let you guys know, um, you know, hindsight, I'm looking back at this after everything is done. Um, so initially, now, to really focus guys, cause I, I'm not gonna talk through this. I've never done this shape and I want this to come out looking. So um, I wound up doing three trivets just like this. And this first one, I did keep them all together and painted them at one time. Um, the other two, I didn't, I took the tiles apart and I painted them individually. And then I basically glued them down with resin onto the backing. And that turned out to be the better way. And I got a better result. Um, you know, I never seen anyone do anything like this before. So, um, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. looking back. Um, it was difficult because the middle, you know, you guys will see as I'm painting it, um, how it becomes difficult to control what I call negative space. So anyway, um, it, it definitely, this one turned out really good, um, but it was kind of like the learning curve one. And then, so once I got this one done and it dried, I thought, you know what? I'm not done. I need to make more. <laughs> and I'm not going to show you the footage of me sitting there painting each tile individually. Uh, it's this, it's kind of the same thing that you're watching here. It's just doing them individually one at a time over and over again. Um, so obviously I had to do eight tiles and to do, you know, four on each trivet. So should I put something on this tile? Like, this looks weird, huh? Yeah. And I think with anything, you know, it's, it's learning and um, figuring it out as you go along, especially if you're, you know, trying to do something that you've never seen anybody else do before. Um, so it was, I just had a really good time with this, trying to figure out how to do it. And now I have the system down. It probably wouldn't take me near as long, but I mean, this is like a two week project. <laughs> now, right now it just looks crazy. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this look better or not. Got to see if I can swirl through that mistake. Y'all, I look in the camera and it looks like a crazy mess, but I'm just gonna keep going with it. This is experimental time. I can't be judgmental on myself. All right, I'm gonna spin it. You know, that is not terrible, guys. I kind of like it. Um, I don't like that blob right there, which I can fix really easy.
Okay. Yeah. This is this is growing on me. I at first I didn't know what to expect. Is it too busy? What's going on? Alright, let me get this up off the mess. I'm gonna put it down. I'm not gonna try to do this like on camera because picking it up, I've got a piece of cardboard underneath there supporting it. So I'm going to move it and then bring you guys over. Okay everyone, so here it is. Um I didn't mess it up. Um, like I'm really, really happy with this. Um, obviously this is the color that we started with that we chose not to do, but it's still super adorable. And I could see how, if I can manage to still turn this into a trivet and then these into little coasters, it'd just be kind of like a fancy. Um, it would be very pretty. It's a little busy. Um, and I want to show you up close. The cracks so it is kind of running out of there even though there's a cardboard backing so it's not running through I spun it enough to kind of because if it stays too thick in those cracks um, I don't think the paint would dry right so I'd rather fill it with resin it gives it a really cool look I'm gonna have to work on how to paint it, but I, I like it. I, for a first try, dude, so cool, so cute. And then we're not even talking about like the sparkle that's gonna happen when this thing is done. But can we just talk about this one, okay? So cute, so absolutely adorable. I love this shape, guys. And I think it's called a, uh, Albaresque, I have to look it up and I'll put it on the screen. But uh, experiment for today, guys. So far, a success. I'll come back and let you know how it dries. Okay, so here we are. It's the next day. It's dry. It's really stuck. So I'm going to peel it apart carefully. So I'm pretty glad I put two coats of tape on this because it's helping me get this cardboard off and it's coming off very nicely. I still want tape because when I resin, resin can be pretty monstrous with the drips so <laughs> oh my god I think it's so pretty um, and so it dried really nice um, you'll see the glitter and the shine when the resin hits it but all in all I'm pretty pleased with it it, it you know it went through the cracks and it dried as well as can be expected okay so there's there it is so anyway um so these little color tests that i did i want to show you guys what they look like dry this one came out so cute now, this is the one that's the same color as these and this is the color that i honestly don't think this is fully dry but you see what happens with the bubbles um and it's going to be okay under resin. But I just don't like having to torch a house paint because they say you can scorch it. You're not supposed to use a torch on it. So um, this one turned out pretty good. It's a nice color combo. But I am glad I stuck with this one. Also, I thought of something. Would this look good like this? If I mount it, no, nah, that's too much. Okay, anyway, getting crazy with it. Um, if I can't figure out a way to make this into a trivet, which, then I could mount it in this frame, okay? Um, 
few videos back, I showed you guys how to make a frame out of this. this is a wood panel that you buy from Amazon. I think you get 12 in a pack for 30 or something like that. It's pretty thin. Um, and what I do is I paint it the color that I want it to be. You know, whatever color goes with the painting. And then I don't do the back. This is the back. And I mount a hook that you can then hang on the wall. Uh, so I, I paint it the color I want it to be. I resin it. And, and then I put whatever I want to in it. And I think this would look nice in, in that. So that's another way you could fancy up this. And I was just sitting here thinking, why can't I use cardboard? Because resin will strengthen it. Resin is really, really strong. So I decided I could get a detailed cutout, which I did, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and paint this the same color. I'm gonna do that right now, as this dark gray or whatever you, this blue is that you want to call it. And I'm gonna paint both sides just to get it the right color. And then tomorrow I'm gonna resin one side of it. I'm gonna resin the top of this, and then. When they're both dry, this will be the bottom, and then I will glue it to opposite sides, like that. Peel this tape off, because it, there'll be resin drips. And then I'm gonna stick it on there and glue it together, and then I'm gonna put feet. It's gonna work, and I, and I really, really feel like it's gonna work. So yeah, I'm gonna paint these cardboard things. Okay, a little bit more hindsight. Um, so, see how I'm painting these with like the way we do things with fluid art? I'm actually putting on a lot of basically water-based paint. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> so, for the second and third one, I used a paintbrush. And the reason is it bubbles. Do you see those bubbles right there? Yeah. Um, so, use a paintbrush, do thin layers with a paintbrush, don't do fluid art to paint your cardboard. And then um, it wound up being okay, but one of them in the bubbles is kind of obvious. So um, anyway, um, learning curve, you know, just trying to keep up with it. So yeah, doing the backings and just seeing how those are gonna look with resin. Um, there was multiple, multiple trips to the resin table for this project. All right, guys, so here is one that I finished last night, okay? Um, I'm gonna put a second coat on it because there's a, like a little bump right there from the paint. Um, so I let the tape on. Once I peel it off, it'll look like this. So this one is completely finished. Uh, sorry for the glare. It's had two coats and the same type of backing Okay, this is what it looks like. I paint both sides, I resin one side, and then the tile goes on the dull side, not the shiny side. So the bottom of this looks like this. Now this one did kind of has a bubble, but the bottom I'm not really worried about it. And then just some felt feet, and it's pretty heavy. Um, it feels very durable. So. Yeah, that's the very first one that's been completed. And so what I'm going to do here is this is going to be the shiny side because the drips are going to be, you know, needed to be ripped off. So this one's getting a second coat. And then I'll peel the tape off and put the feet on. So this one's almost done. This one is going to be, this is its first coat. And so what I did with this one, instead of leaving them attached, I did them separate. Wanted to figure out which way was easiest. I don't want to go too heavy. You just want a thin coat. And bubbles don't matter. You're not going to see it. This is basically the glue.
I think I spent more time on the back of this <laughs> project than any other project I've ever done before. It's, but now that I know the process, um, it's really not that hard. So, all right. So I already figured out which order. And that's the other thing about doing them separately is uh, you can kind of arrange them. And that was fun. My girls helped me with it. Okay, so I'm going to get them on there. And then readjust once they're all on there. coat on top. Now these have been resin once already, so really I'm just gluing it together and filling in the seam. I'm not going to be able to fill it in too much because a lot of it runs out, that'll take a second coat, but I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to really need a second coat after this because technically this is a second coat if you just count the tiles. So... So just super high speed of putting resin on um, and just in case anybody's thinking, could I do this with varnish? Um, absolutely not. This is a uh, definitely a resin project. Uh, it serves as glue, a support, and I don't think anything. Uh, if you guys come up with any ideas, though, uh, please comment below on any better ways I could have done it. But uh, I haven't been able to think of any. I am going to check on this in about an hour just to make sure nothing moved. Um, this I'm not worried about moving because it's already solid. This is the pieces that we just put together. So I'm just going to make sure none of these shifted um, while it's drying. Okay, hi everyone. So I'm finally going to do the finish of this video. This took forever. Um, but I am very happy. I decided to go ahead and obviously I made three trivets. Uh, these two are the same colors. And then I decided to make some coasters to go with it. And, um, so let's just look at them one by one. Um, I'm gonna look at this one. I think this one has turned out to be my ultimate favorite. And, um... It just, there's some sparkle. Let's look at the sparkle. So gorgeous, love that one. And, you know, I use all the same colors on the tops. This background color um, <laughs> dried so much darker and wound up being awesome because I was looking for something in a really dark blue. And so, okay, so this set is done. I don't have cork on the back yet. That's super easy. Um, I didn't want to wait. And then here's the back of this one. So it's ready to roll. Um, it's a little teensy weensy bit unlevel when I flip it over, but it's with the padding on there. It's good to go. This is the trivet. This would be really cute with some like teacups or something maybe. How cute is, oh, wrong way. This is the way it goes. Like how cute is that? And then possibly a teapot, right? For a tea set. <gasps> I love that idea. Okay, anyway, so that's that one. And then this is the, the this is the second one I made in this color. Um, and then I, what was different is 
I painted these individually, okay? And, and it was much easier because I was able to design the, um, putting it together. Look at that beautiful shine. The gold pops really, really good. Yeah, and that's that one. And then let's look at these, what I'm calling coasters. So gorgeous. Just love that. And yeah, and then just for giggles, let's look at it with the teacups on it. <laughs> right? How cute is that? And I don't have a teapot, but now I want to go and get one so bad and have like a little matching set for a tea set. Uh, I know that wasn't my original plan, but um, uh, well, a friend of mine was giving away teacups and I was like, oh, well, maybe I could use this. <laughs> so she gave me a few of them. Um, okay, so this is the very first one I did, okay? They all look the same on the back. So this was like my learning lesson. I learned a lot from making this first one. I learned to, how to not get the bubble on the back um, by putting too much paint on cardboard, because that's what happens. You have to do really light layers and then do the resin. Um, and I do like the way this one turned out. I don't love that swirl right there um and i'm being really really picky it's just too big it's too big of a swirl and but it's still all the same colors and everything and it's you know ready to be used for whatever maybe this way but this one painting it when they were all together uh, proved a little difficult. It wound up being fine, but I feel like the negative space would have been a little bit better. Like this only has negative space here. And then like this one, doesn't it, it just looks better because I was able to arrange it with it. I like to have a little negative space. So that's what looks good in my eye. And then this one, again, I was able to arrange it to having that negative space. So anyway, uh, thanks for hanging in there, guys, for this, this, this video is a long one, but, um, here's the finish. I'm really happy. Thanks for all your support and your nice comments. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Okay. Bye now.